for the most part, the way Congress works and has worked for many years now is the Speaker of the House has to let it go through. If the Speaker says no, it's not moving. Um, the Speaker has amassed a tremendous amount of power. This probably started in the Gingrich days. This was before my time, of course, um, and has continued and has, has gotten, um, is, in, with successive speakers, has gotten worse. For example, during my time in Congress, John Boehner, a man I tried to oust from Congress, I tried to oust him from the speakership. I didn't want him as speaker anymore because I thought he was so bad. He actually ran a more open Congress than Paul Ryan or Nancy Pelosi. And that's hard to believe. Like, if I could go back in time and say to, um, you know, past Justin Amash, hey, this is actually as good as it gets right now, I would have probably changed my approach to it and said, hey, I guess we, <laughs> we're we going to stick with John Boehner for now. But I tried to oust him because I thought he was so bad. I mean, this is a guy who one time called me a terrorist. And I still, um, you know, think he was probably the best speaker um, we've had overall because he was he cared about... Uh, opening up the process uh, relative to his successors. Um, and it wasn't a super open process, but at least we could offer amendments on the House floor from time to time. And we don't have any of that now. So why do these bills get presented without the opportunity for amendment? It, is that it's because it sounds like that's a big part of the problem is that, well, hey, it's take it or leave it. And then you're like, well, I guess like if I can't change it, I'm going to have to say no to this thing. Um, when did that yeah. become the norm? So um, until about 2016, May 2016, which is uh, while Paul, Paul Ryan was speaker, it was uh, the tradition of the House that uh, particularly on particularly on appropriations bills. So these are the spending bills. You had something called an open process where any member of the House could come to the House floor during the reading of the bill and offer an amendment. And as long as the amendment was germane to the bill, that member would get a vote on that amendment. So we would have votes on all sorts of things, especially, uh, like I said, on appropriations bills. And um, that, that was the tradition of the House for uh, you know over 200 years. And then... Along comes Paul Ryan, and he says, you know, the Democrats are trying to put in these poison pill amendments. They are offering amendments that are causing um, our members to have really tough votes. And we don't want to have these tough votes. So what he told the Republican conference, because I was there at the, uh, when he announced this, he said, look, we're going to shut down the open process. Um, you guys can bring your amendments and present them to the rules committee. And I will allow a lot of amendments to go through and be voted on the floor, but I will be able to weed out the, the um, as he called them, you know, the, the dangerous or poison pill Democratic amendments. We can weed those out. And Republicans were sitting there in the room and they're like, yes, yes, let's do this. And I objected. I said, this is crazy. And... First of all, he's telling you he's going to just weed out these, um, you know, poison pill amendments. He's going to weed out all sorts of amendments once once this process starts. And what's the end game? So what happens when the Democrats are in charge? Then they're like, you know, ending Republican amendments. This is a, a dangerous game to play. And we shouldn't be doing this. We should have an open process. We are a, a body um, where we're supposed to discover the outcomes through the legislative process. But, you know, I lost that argument. And Republicans went forward with that. They shut down the amendment process. And Paul Ryan became the first speaker in the history of our country to have a whole term where we had no open amendments. In other words, there, there was never a piece of legislation during his whole term that he was speaker, the full, the, the full term he served as speaker, where we were allowed to go to the floor and offer an amendment. And Nancy Pelosi has carried that on. During her tenure as speaker, she has not allowed a single open process um, during her entire tenure as speaker, during this recent tenure. I, I can't speak for, for before. She must have allowed it before. But recently, she's followed the precedent set by Paul Ryan. And that's really bad for the American people. It's really, really bad. Um, 
I mean, we could talk about this for a long time, but it, it affects everything. It affects executive power, for example. Uh, I'll give you, um, just, just to, to flesh that out a little bit, if the president of the United States knows that he only has to negotiate with a couple people, it makes his job a lot easier. He can get what he wants a lot more easily than if he has to negotiate with the entire Congress. So you've just given the president a tremendous amount of leverage by closing down the process that the uh, framers of the Constitution never intended the president to have. And he only has to negotiate with Nancy Pelosi and Mitch McConnell, essentially, right? There's only two people he has to get it through because they run the whole show. Nobody else has any say. Now, people say to me when I say, let's open up the process, let's, um, let's allow amendments. Oh, this will take forever, Justin. This will, it'll, you'll slow everything down. Well, first of all, we, we spend a lot of time on things we don't need to be spending time on in Congress. I mean, there's like a lot of stuff that well, passes. Well, no, no, that, I just want to stop here for a second, Justin, so would, and, and, and just joke that it's like, oh, because... Congress is such this model of legislative efficiency right now that if you were to right. allow amendments that you'd be interfering with this well-oiled machine that's just humming along. Right, I mean, like, exactly. <laughs> like anyone, anyone looking at it right now knows that Congress is not working efficiently under this model. This model of Mnuchin negotiates with Pelosi and McConnell is not efficient. It's taken months. Look at the, the COVID relief stuff. Relief bill, it's, yes. Yeah, it's taken months and months to get anything. And then they just, they negotiate for a couple weeks. Then the president says something on Twitter. And then they're like, oh, we're, we're stop. We're going to stop negotiating now. And then he says, no, no, I changed my mind. And they start again. This has been going on um, for months, for months now. And if you just put legislation on the house floor and allow us all to participate, every single member, if Justin Amash has an idea, let me offer it. For people who say that it'll slow down the process to offer amendments, it won't slow down the process. It will speed up the process. And, it will speed and you, up know the process. Else, you know what else happens? Every member of Congress then feels like they participated in the process. And so it brings them on board and brings their constituents on board with whatever the final package is. Because now you can say to your constituents, I offered an idea that you guys really wanted. My constituents wanted this thing. I went on the House floor and I offered it as an amendment, but it didn't pass. It failed. So this is the product that is the compromise of the House of Representatives. And a lot of members will then say, well, this is the best we can do. And this is something that I'd be willing to vote for. There are other members who say, no, I'm not willing to vote for it. And that's okay too. But the, the fact is we went through a process and we got something that, uh, in a much better way, reflects the will of the American people and reflects the representatives of the people. They're using their judgment on behalf of the people. Why do you think more has not been made of the fact that the legislative process now uh, shuts down the ability to amend? Um, because at this point... It's been in effect since 2016. Uh, we can see some of the negative effects. People are very uh, upset about how uh, unresponsive Congress has been to a crisis after crisis at this point, and COVID relief is the crisis of the moment. Uh, I have not heard that much in the press uh, beating up um, yeah. either Paul Ryan or Nancy Pelosi for shutting down amendments, and it seems like a fundamental problem. Would you agree, first of all, with the sense that this is somewhat underreported? Oh, it's it's way underreported. And I've, I've complained to reporters about it. I've said this is like, this is the big story. Because when I go to town halls and I talk to my constituents, and, um, and obviously we haven't been doing in-person town halls with the, with the COVID situation, but uh, back in the day, they would say to me, Justin, um, you know, the process is all fine and all. Like, it's, it's nice that there's some procedural problems, but we care about the substance. We need to get this, this bill. And I say to them, you can't get that bill that you want. You can't get that idea that you want without a, an open process. There's no way for a member of Congress to bring that to the floor to offer it. So it, it, there's this expectation that I, as a member of Congress, can go and just offer things and have votes on them. And that's just not true. Um, I can't even 
tweak bills. And so let alone, I mean, forget the idea of offering my own bill. I can't even amend bills. So that is a real problem and it's underreported, I think because it's just not a sexy topic. Like Really? Because this strikes me as very, very <laughs> no, I, sexy well, in the sense that it's very impactful. I mean... Well, you, you uh, and I, yeah, you know, I think this is like in our uh, wheelhouse where, you know, I'm... To me, I'm like a procedure person. This is sort of how I think. I think about process um, because if you control the process, that has a big impact on the outcome. So the way the the um, leadership teams are controlling the process now in both the House and Senate, that impacts the outcome very directly. I, I would hope that we can all agree on following a process that allows everyone to participate so that the libertarian can offer ideas on the House floor. The progressive can offer ideas on the House floor. The conservative can offer ideas on the House floor. We want to bring all of these viewpoints to this magnificent body that was created in our country, this magnificent body to, uh, to legislate on behalf of the American people. We want to bring all of these viewpoints there and work to persuade each other. But I can't do that until we fix the procedural process stuff. So my focus, my focus really has been on that. Thank you for listening in. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. If you did, please do subscribe to Yang Speaks and click on notifications so we can let you know every time we have a new episode.